Hey guys, welcome back. So today we are gonna be doing another fragrance video. Today's video is gonna be all about wedding day fragrances what I think would be the perfect perfume to wear on your special day. If you guys did not know, I am engaged and I am actually getting married next year. And I'll be honest with you guys, this whole topic and subject is very kind of like nerve wracking for me because I'm trying to find like the perfect scent for my day and I'm putting so much like pressure on it. And I don't know if anyone else is like this or if anyone else has been through this, but I feel like I am just being very particular about what I want to wear on my wedding day. So I figured I need to just, you know, get over that and give you guys this video because a lot of you guys have been requesting it. So without further ado, let's get into the fragrances. No order, just kind of going through some of my favorites and kind of describing what bride or what situation I think they would be perfect for. So I think I'm gonna start off with the fragrance that I have seen over and over again in other people's wedding day fragrance recommendations, and that is none other than the Delina fragrance from Parfums de Marley. This is super hyped up, very popular, very expensive. It is considered niche, I guess. And yeah, for good reason. When you see this bottle, when you smell the scent, it is just the epitome of, you know, a romantic feminine day person feeling. It's just very feminine. It's super girly and super pretty. And they do have three versions of this. This is the original. They also have the La Rose version and the exclusive version. So I think any of those three would be perfect for wedding day. This is the original. This one I feel like is a little bit more powdery and a little bit like tangier. There's like a rhubarb note in this one that kind of gives it a little bit of sourness in the opening. So it all just depends on your preference. The La Rose one is definitely more on the fresh side. So if you're wanting something a little bit more fresh and airy, that one's amazing. And then they also have the exclusive version, which is a little bit more sultry. It kind of has like an incense vibe to it. I love that for a kind of like nighttime event. And that one I think might be my favorite. So that's this one. And the brand Be Layered or Layered does have a dupe of this fragrance. So this is the dupe for the exclusive one. And it's just so good. It just smells like a rose, peony, lychee dessert. It's very decadent. It's very sultry, sexy, and I just love it. So if you're someone who loves really just feminine fragrances, you have to check this one out or the layered version. And I'm just going to read you guys the note breakdown for the original. The top notes are lychee, rhubarb, bergamot, and nutmeg. The middle notes are Turkish rose, peony, musk, Patalia, vanilla, and the base notes are cashmere, cedar, Haitian, vetiver, and incense. And then for the exclusive version, the notes are lychee, pear, and bergamot, Turkish rose, oud, incense, and then the base notes are vanilla, amber, and woody. So the exclusive is definitely a little bit deeper and warmer, but you cannot go wrong with any of the three. So then next moving on, we have a fragrance, which I feel like this brand is really associated with weddings, with engagements, with diamonds. So that is from the brand Tiffany and Company. So this bottle, Oh, I love this bottle. This is the intense version. So they have a few different versions and I think they also just came out with like a rose gold version, but this is the intense and I think this is definitely my favorite. And this fragrance right here is super like black tie, formal, expensive ballroom. Everyone's wearing a tuxedo. Everyone's just looking very luxury and very lavish. So the scent itself is very warm and powdery and sweet. And I feel like if I had to compare this to a fabric, it would be cashmere, you know, that really warm, soft, just comforting, luxurious feeling that is this in a fragrance. So there's a pretty strong iris note in here and I feel like that's what makes it powdery. So if you like the note of iris, you would definitely like this. And I know that this is a bridal fragrance, but for some reason, when I smell this, and especially the dry down on my skin, for some reason, it reminds me of a man. <laughs> Not like, it doesn't smell like a cologne to me, but kind of like that lingering feeling on your skin of maybe it could be 
mixed with a men's cologne. And if you've watched any of my fragrance videos in the past, you know I kind of like that vibe. Like I don't want to smell straight up like a dude, but when it's kind of has just like a touch of masculinity in there, I tend to love it. So this is really nice. The notes of this are pear, mandarin leaf, and pink pepper. The middle notes are iris, rose, and jasmine. And the base notes are musk, cashmere, benzoin, vanilla, carrot, and amber. The carrot is throwing me off. I don't even know. What does a carrot even smell like? Did they just put that in there for like 24 carrot magic? in the air? I don't know. But anyways, this is a very warm, rich, powdery scent that's great for a formal event. So then next up we have a fragrance that in the past I've said that if I had kids and I were a mom, I would want them to think that I smelled like this, okay? So I feel like that kind of translates into the wife category and department. And so that is none other than Jo Malone's Mimosa and Cardamom. This scent is so good. It is fresh, it is spicy, it is comforting, it is cozy, it's a little floral, it's just, so, so good. And this is definitely in the top running for me to be a wedding day fragrance just because I love it so much. I have it in candle form. I have it in, I think, soap form. It's just so, so, so good. And surprisingly, the longevity on this one is pretty nice. A lot of the other Jo Malone fragrances I've tried, they don't really last on the skin at all. This one lasts on my skin really nicely. And it's just, I don't know, something about this scent just is very wife-like and mother-like to me. Just very comforting and soft and pretty. So the notes of this are very simple. The top note is cardamom, the middle note is mimosa, and the base note is tonka bean. So the tonka bean definitely gives it like a creamy factor. The cardamom gives it a little bit of spice and the mimosa just makes it a very soft, pretty floral and just one of my favorite scents ever. So the next I wanted to mention another Jo Malone fragrance and this when I asked on Instagram what you guys wore on your wedding day I think this was the most popular answer and so I wanted to mention it in this video but also a fragrance that I think is a little bit better than this in terms of longevity and scent wise they're very similar but this is Jo Malone's Peony and Blush Suede. It's definitely like a peony rose suede scent just like the name but it also has a red apple scent in there and for that reason I don't love it. For some reason that red apple scent is just I don't know it reminds me of like a fake red apple like Febreze scent and the apple part just really throws me off and turns me off from this being a favorite. So I found a fragrance that's similar to this. It's more expensive but it does last longer on the skin but it does have very similar notes and that is from Armani, the Privé line and this is a name that I don't know how to say. It's Pivoine Suju. That's not it but you know you can read it for yourself and you can figure out how you would say it. But this is a really beautiful peony rose sparkling bouquet of flowers. It's very feminine. It is peony and rose and raspberry. And yeah, so it's very fruity and floral, but I think the raspberry note works a little bit better than the apple note that's in the Jo Malone. And it just smells like a beautiful bouquet of pink flowers. And it's very nice. It lasts on the skin. I think it has some warmer notes in the base so it kind of like warms up on the skin a little bit nicer than I think that the Jo Malone does but I think either one you can't really go wrong if you're looking for a peony based scent these are both great. So the notes for the Armani are raspberry, pink pepper, mandarin orange, peony, may rose, rose, musk, patchouli, and amber. I don't really get any patchouli in this at all you definitely get the musk and the amber and the dry down, but I don't get any patchouli whatsoever, so don't let that scare you away. If you don't like patchouli, I don't get that at all. And just a little disclaimer, I know a lot of these fragrances have similar notes, like especially like the Delina and the Peony Rose ones. They don't smell anything alike. I know they sound like they would, but they definitely don't. <laughs> So the next moving on, I had to mention a Chanel fragrance because Chanel is just like the epitome of classiness. And I'll be honest, a lot of the fragrances that I've tried from Chanel don't really work for me, but this one has to be one of my favorites and that is Chanel's Coco Mademoiselle Intense. So this one is very pretty. This one smells like a boss. Like 
the bride is a boss. She is the head bitch in charge. There's no messing with her. She doesn't need a wedding planner. She's just very no bullshit and she will probably, you know, bulldoze you over because she's just like super in charge. So if that is your personality type, I think this would definitely be your kind of scent. It's very classy smelling. It is very rich smelling. It has some florals in there. It has, I believe, some patchouli in there. So it just is a very well-rounded, classy scent that works for pretty much any occasion, but I think more towards like a more formal setting. Like this is not something that I would wear if I was just wearing leggings, you know what I'm saying? So the notes of Coco Mademoiselle Intense, not the original version. The original version is just like a little bit too light and airy. I prefer the intense version, especially for more of like a special occasion. But the notes of this are Sicilian orange, Calabrian bergamot, lemon, rose, fruity notes, jasmine, patchouli, tonka bean, Madagascar vanilla, white musk, and labdanum. So yeah, I definitely get a good amount of patchouli in here. And I think that's what makes it a little bit kind of like strong and sort of intimidating and boss-like, but you definitely get the florals, you get the rose, you get the jasmine, you get the citruses, and all in all, it makes it a nice kind of like year-round boss bride scent. And this bottle, the Chanel, you cannot go wrong, especially for like bridal photography. This is gonna look so good and timeless. That is also something that I'm like thinking about when I'm doing these fragrances. I'm like, how is it gonna look in a photo? Because we need to think about all the aesthetics of things. <laughs> like no offense, but this this is not making the cut. It's not making the cut. I'm sorry, you're, I mean, you're cute or whatever, but you're not, you're not ready for the day. She's ready, she was born ready, but this little wooden bottle, that's not, it's not happening for me. So the next moving on, I had to mention this scent. It's one of my favorites of all time. I know a lot of people say this scent is like overhyped or it's like trashy or whatever, but I don't understand that. I think it's just because it's a very popular scent. Some people just like, like to say that it's like basic or whatever, but it doesn't smell basic to me, okay? And it's always gonna be in my collection. This is Carolina Herrera's Good Girl Fragrance. I don't love the bottle for a wedding day situation. It's just like a little bit borderline tacky. It's cute on a vanity, but in a wedding photo, I don't know about this, sorry. But the fragrance inside the bottle is just so good. It is definitely one of like the sexier scents on the list. So if that is your vibe and you want something a little bit more sexual and sensual, this is the fragrance. It has a thousand and 45 different notes. I feel like this leans a little bit masculine, especially in the dry down, and that's what I love about it. Mm. I haven't smelled this in a while, but every time I spray it, I'm just like, oh, it's so good. Every time. I never get sick of it. It's really good. I would probably gravitate this more towards like cooler weather temperatures. I don't really see this as a summer fragrance scent just because it's a little bit on the heavier side, but it's just so good. I'll read you the notes and you will be overwhelmed because there's just way too many, but here we go. Top notes of almond, coffee, bergamot, and lemon. Middle notes are tuberose, jasmine, orange blossom, orris, Bulgarian rose. The base notes are tonka bean, cacao, vanilla, praline, sandalwood, musk, amber, cashmere wood, patchouli, cinnamon, and cedar. So for me, I definitely get the coffee, the bergamot, all of the florals, and a lot of the tonka bean and maybe maybe the cedar in the dry down i don't know i feel like everyone knows what this smells like and it's one of those fragrances you either love it or hate it i love it and i probably always will so i had to mention that next up i wanted to talk about a fragrance that is very yummy and edible smelling for all of my brides who just want a very gourmand yummy like delicious dessert type scent. And that is from the brand Seven Virtues. This is Vanilla Woods. This brand is more like of a natural based brand with like essential oils and minimal ingredients. And because of that, you think that the scents are probably gonna suck, but they are really good. This one specifically is amazing. And to me, this smells like, just like a caramel apple, vanilla ice cream type dessert. It's very yummy and edible smelling. There is definitely a woodsy vibe to it as well, hence the name Vanilla Woods. 
Um, but I feel like it never gets too sweet where it's like overly sickly sweet. It's just really nice. And if you're a vanilla lover, you will definitely love this. But I did want to mention that I recently got a body spray from the Sol de Janeiro brand. And this smells almost exactly the same as this. So if you want to like test out this type of scent, uh, check out this one. It's called Brazilian Crush black amber plum and vanilla woods even the name is almost the same okay so if you want to kind of like test run it and see if you like it this smells very very similar and yeah so the notes i believe of this are extremely simple so the top note is pear middle note is rose i don't get any rose from the scent but maybe someone else will and the base notes are vanilla caramel and amber so overall a very yummy vanilla woody scent next let's talk about a white floral fragrance if you are a white floral person you need to check out this scent i never really was a white floral person until i tried this i was like okay this is really nice and it kind of made me open up my eyes to white florals and stop giving them the side eye thinking that they were just old grandmother scents. So this is from La Labo. So it's not necessarily a cheap brand. I don't know if it's quite niche, but it's kind of somewhere in the middle, but this is Lee, Lise, Lis, Lis, Lise, <laughs> Lisa 41. So this is just very white floral and it's almost beachy to me. So because it is a little beachy, I am maybe considering it or maybe considering layering it with something else for my personal wedding day because I am getting married in the Dominican Republic. So kind of like a beachy tropical environment. And this is just so good. It is like tuberose, I believe gardenia, lily, like pretty much like all the white florals and vanilla like whipped cream all mixed together. The best way I could describe this would be a bouquet of white flowers like you would have on your wedding day sitting on a fluffy whipped vanilla cloud. Mm, it's just very like almost like a buttery white flower. And the notes of this are tuberose, lily, jasmine, vanilla, and musk. Yeah, I, you definitely get a lot of jasmine in here as well. So if you don't like white flowers, steer very clear of this one. If you are thinking about liking white flowers, definitely give it a chance because it changed my mind. Then moving on to a white floral slash yellow floral scent. And this I discovered this year and it's hands down one of my favorites. It's so unique. It is just unlike anything else that I've really smelled. Like when I first smelled this, I was like, what even is that? I need it, I love it. And this is from Armani Privé as well. This one I believe is way more expensive than this one. I'm not really sure why, I think maybe this is an EDT. But this is totally worth the price. It lasts on your skin forever and ever. It lasts on clothing even longer. It is just, oh my God. Even just taking the cap off, you instantly get what it smells like. It's so good. Okay, so I mentioned this in a fragrance video recently and I thought they were discontinuing it, but now I see it back online. So I guess maybe they were just like playing with us all. But anyway, this is Armani Privé Vert Malachite. And what does this smell like? It is a, almost like a spicy lily banana. <laughs> syrupy scent okay so for some reason yellow florals a lot of the time uh, especially like ylang ylang can smell almost banana like and almost tropical so again that's why I'm kind of leaning towards this for a wedding day scent for me it is just very rich it is deep it is and when I say rich I don't mean expensive even though it is expensive but I mean like rich and decadent and almost syrupy, there is benzoin in the base and I think that's what gives it that like deep syrupy quality. I think there's also amber in there. So it's very warm and spicy and floral and just, it's so unique and I love it so much. So what are the real notes according to like Armani or whoever? Top notes of bitter orange and petit grain. You definitely get a little bit of citrus in the opening but I don't feel like that lasts. Uh, middle notes are jasmine, ylang ylang, and pink pepper. You definitely get those white florals, yellow florals. And then the base notes are lily, vanilla, and benzoin. So yeah. And I know what you're thinking. Why does she keep doing this? Why does she keep taking it on and off? 
she doesn't know we don't know nobody knows so then i have a few left and i feel like some people like especially like the fragrance community people who are super pretentious and like only like niche fragrances and blah 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 will look down on some of my next few choices but whatever don't really care the next one is from kkw and if you've watched any of my other fragrance videos you know i'm not ashamed to say i love her fragrances i think she does some really good ones and this next one I had to mention even though it is more of like a simple like everyday scent I can also see this being really great on a bride and this is KKW crystal violet musk and I don't believe there's any violet in here but this is more of like a lavender scent so it's kind of like calming and powdery and fluffy and I just love this scent it lasts forever on me like you don't even need to spray more than like two sprays it's very strong but something about the lavender kind of made me think of wedding day because it's very calming and if you need something that's just going to like soothe you and not be overly complicated this is a great one it's great for every day but i think it could be great for a bride as well so this one like i said it's lavender and to me it smells like a lavender marshmallow cloud so like fluffy lavender powdery marshmallowy and when i say marshmallow i mean like that powdery coating on the outside of a marshmallow you know what i'm talking about and like vanilla it's just very light fluffy airy not too heavy and would be great for like daytime or pretty much any time of the year and if you are like me and you did not like Guerlain's Mon Guerlain that one I wanted to love so bad because everyone loves it and I do like lavender but there's like a licorice note in there that I don't like and so this is what I wanted Mon Guerlain to be so if you had a similar experience with Mon Guerlain as I did definitely check this one out and so the notes of this one are top notes of lavender sugar and bergamot Middle notes are Peony, Star Jasmine, and Lily of the Valley. And then the base notes are Vanilla, Tonka Bean, and Australian Sandalwood. So I definitely get a lot of the Tonka Bean in this one and the Lavender and the Sugar and I think Vanilla. Yeah, <laughs> I get a lot of the notes, but I don't really get Sandalwood or any of like the florals really, but mainly Lavender and Vanilla there. But not like essential oil vanilla, if you know what I'm saying. So then the last one I wanted to mention is actually like discontinued and it was reformulated but i have a fragrance that i've had in my collection that i love that i just realized smells extremely similar especially in the dry down so the fragrance that i'm talking about that i love and was sadly reformulated is the miss dior eau de parfum and this i believe i'm not sure like the version of this or whatever because they reformulated it a few years ago and then i think they reformulated it again but i bought this i think either like end of 2014 or beginning of 2015 i think beginning of 2015 so whatever version that is i have loved this for so long it is just so classy it's feminine it's sweet it is just one of my favorite scents but i never talk about it and i hardly ever spray it because you can't get it anymore so i love this one i don't even know what the notes are when i spray this like the opening is a little bit strong i think there is like some patchouli in the opening that makes it a little bit like eh, i don't know but the dry down okay here it's coming in it's coming in oh it's just so sweet and it just smells just like timeless and classy i kind of feel like it's in a similar no i don't know i i want to say it's kind of similar to this genre but this i like way 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 more it's just oh my god i love it it's so feminine it's so sweet and pretty and definitely signature scent worthy and i love it and so this next fragrance and this is like the last one i'm going to mention i recently realized smells so similar especially in the dry down and i don't even know if the notes are the same or whatever but this one is from kkw and I think some of you probably will guess what it is, but I had to mention it because A, I love the smell and B, because of the name. And the name is Wifey. How could I not mention this? This is one of my favorites. I don't know what it is about it. I don't even think many people even like this, but I love it. Every time I wear it, I get compliments. It lasts on my skin really nicely. It's sweet and fruity and floral and warm and just checks all my boxes. And for some reason, I am a huge fan. I almost took the cap off. I did. Uh, but yeah, this 
This right here is not cute in a wedding photo, okay? I have the rose gold version of this. I almost wanna like take the juice out and put it into that one because this, yes, it's cute or whatever, but I don't want this in my wedding photos. No offense, but Kim, can you put this in a different bottle for me? Por favor. But yeah, I really love this scent. Don't care if people think it's not cool to like KKW. I think it's great. It's affordable and it's amazing. So the notes of this are violet leaves, yuzu, and pomelo. Middle notes of mimosa, dewdrop, magnolia, and freesia. And the base notes are whipped cream, caramel, and musk. And so I don't know what the notes of this one are because there's like a million Miss Dior's on Fragrantica and I have no idea which is the correct one. But for some reason, these smell very similar to me, especially in the dry down. The opening, not so much. But once they dry down on my skin, they are very similar. And so if you're someone who loved this one, this version, maybe check this out because I love them both. I really, really do. And I think they're great feminine, wife-like scents. I know a lot of people love the Miss Dior, like absolutely blooming. I tried that one, but I don't know. It's just, it smells like a fruity hairspray or something or like a nice shampoo, but this one doesn't smell anything like that at all. It doesn't smell like the new version at all. I don't even know where they came up with those because they're not even related to this, but whatever. And so that is going to wrap up my wedding day fragrance recommendation video. I have so many others that I could probably mention and I might change my mind on this between now and when I actually get married next year. I haven't personally decided which is gonna be my special day scent, but any of the ones I mentioned today, I would actually consider as potential scents for me personally. I didn't wanna just talk about scents that like everyone else like loves or whatever. I wanted to mention scents that I personally think are worthy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below what you wore on your wedding day or what you're thinking of wearing, or if you don't even like give a shit about it, let me know. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and your favorites. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. I know some of you probably think it's like so dumb that like I'm like putting so much weight and thought into this decision and having so much anxiety about it, but I feel like it's like setting the tone. Like it's setting the tone for the marriage. If I wear the wrong scent, the marriage is doomed. Doomed. Like I just don't know. Like what is the correct scent? I need to figure out what is the number one scent of divorced women. Let me get on. Is that even a thing? Scent of divorced women. No! Oh my god, no. The first thing that came up, I'm not even joking, is about vaginal odor. That is not what I was thinking about, okay? That is a different type of scent. That is not the signature scent that I was referring to. And we're gonna close that down. We're gonna shut it down. Sorry, guys.